Greetings, Greenhouse people. I'm your host, Bill Calkins with Ball Tech On Demand. And on the agenda today is a topic that's pretty cutting edge and not necessarily because it's brand new in the world of horticulture, but due to the fact that this type of production is expanding and becoming critical to more and more growers uh, all across North America. And I'm talking about tissue culture. And like you, I'm excited to hear more about this from our guests today, both of whom have tremendous knowledge to share from research and application perspectives. Specifically, they're discussing tissue culture acclimation and the key components to success in ornamental plant production. Joining me today is Deanna Felton, longtime propagation and production manager from Sunbelt Greenhouses in Georgia, and Dr. Nathan Jonke, the culture research manager at Ball Horticultural Company in Chicago. And I know you guys have a lot to say on this topic, so let's get started. Why don't you share your screen and perhaps both of you can share a few words about how you got started working with tissue culture before jumping into your presentation. Uh, hi everybody, Nathan Jonke. I'm at Ball Horticultural Company in West Chicago. And I got started in tissue culture back when I was an undergraduate student at North Dakota State. I actually did research there and had one of my first publications in tissue culture. But now that I've been with Ball for a few years, uh, tissue culture has really become an important um, aspect of the company and breeding as well as a commercial input. And so I've been doing research here in West Chicago on how to acclimate plants out of tissue culture so that our customers can be more successful. How about you, Deanna? Well, we got started here at Sunbelt as, a, as an alternative option to uh, a URC that was clean and virus free that and it's an was a easy option for us to um, jump into yeah so we're gonna go through some slides today on uh, tissue culture acclimation and how to uh, work on this in your operation but also give you some steps on what products you might want to use or get started with or some things that you might want to work on a little bit to give you a, your product offering a little more boost and some interest because those can be a little bit more challenging uh, crops. Then we're going to put some science behind the acclimation process. You're going to get some practical tips from uh, Deanna. And then we're going to show you a little bit of research that we've been doing as well. So let's get started. So I want to paint this picture for everybody in tissue culture first is when you think back in the horticulture industry, uh, tissue culture is really the next frontier. And if you look back on seed, you know, there was a lot of challenges to get to where we are today. Germination, how to produce that seed, um, and growing in plugs, moving to peat-based media. And so we've come a really long way in seed and it works really well. Uh, a little bit further down the line, we developed vegetative propagation, stock plants are being grown in Central America, in Africa, and so vegetative has really taken off, but there's also some been some a lot of challenges along the way, right? And it's taken some time to build up to where we are. Now think of tissue culture as really in its infancy. We haven't done a lot with it, even though it's been used a lot in academia uh, for people to learn tissue culture, to transform plants, but really as a commercial input, it's in its infancy. So uh, give it a little time, but also make sure you're giving feedback to your suppliers on tissue culture and how to, to continue making this better. Um, but our goal today through this presentation is to help you be more successful with crops coming from tissue culture. And we're going to go over uh, what is tissue culture, get everyone on the same page on um, words that we're going to use throughout the presentation and vernacular of so that when you talk about tissue culture, everyone knows what you're talking about. Uh, second, we're going to talk about components to success. This is going to be the meat of the presentation, uh, where you're going to really learn how to acclimate plants and what causes plants to fail or be successful. And lastly, we're going to give you some uh, tissue culture tips, and we'll say TC multiple times throughout this presentation. And when we say that, we mean tissue culture. So I want to start off with some vocabulary. Uh, you do that in school, right? Early on, you have to know what words mean. I already said TC means tissue culture. Uh, you hear us talk about deflasking. 
And this is actually removing the plantlet, which is in the tissue culture flask, out of that container and sticking it as you would a cutting. And tissue culture can come in various forms in vessels, bags, flasks, uh, multiple different containers. Now, acclimation is where we're going to spend a lot of time. And this really is just a process of adjusting plants from that flask or container to the greenhouse environment by controlling uh, humidity, light, and temperature, and water. Here's one that you're probably not familiar with, and that is the word vitrified. This is a water-soaked appearance, which you can see here on the right hand of the screen. Uh, and you'll see that when plants come out of a tissue culture flask and it's been jumbled around for a little bit, uh, and that'll actually break down. But we'll revisit all of these terms later on in the presentation, so keep those in your mind. But also go online and check out our vocab list and tissue culture that we're going to have posted on the Ball Seed uh, website. So then if you want to learn more about the different words in tissue culture, you can use that as a resource. So what is tissue culture? Um, you can see here, actually one of my past interns, Lori, is working in a hood, and that's a sterile condition where she's chopping up plantlets, tissue culture plantlets. And this is really a, a growth of cells that's derived from living tissue outside in your natural environment and grown on an artificial medium. And that medium is what we call auger. You can see in the bottom of this flask here, it basically looks like jello. And in there, we've got sugar, we've got hormones, carbohydrates, um, many different things we can put in this auger or agar, if you can also say. And that really drives the plant to grow in a specific way. We can have it grow shoots, roots. Uh, we could have it grow a lot of callus. And you can multiply it very quickly or very slowly. Within the flask, we have plantlets. That's what we call the small, basically micro plants within it. And within this container, it's aseptic or basically almost sterile. And we need that to be almost sterile because we basically have all of this food here for these plants. And if you get bacteria or fungi in there, they're going to grow very quickly. Um, and one thing you can also do with tissue culture is produce basically virus-free plants by cutting off the growing point over and over and over again. Also in that flask, it's completely closed. And so it's almost 100% uh, humidity in there. And in the labs, it's generally low light intensity, uh, definitely not like your normal greenhouse environment. And this basically drives a lot of factors that we're going to talk about in acclimation. So let's go over quickly how tissue culture is produced. In this uh, grid here, you see stage one, two, uh, three, four, and there's also a stage zero. Uh, that stage zero is really the plant outside what we collect from. That's called the X plant. In order to get that into tissue culture, they harvest a portion of the plant. They'll do some sterilization and cleaning procedures, put it into a test tube or a larger container. And that's called stage one in the establishment phase. Once we go into stage two, we're driving shoot development because we're multiplying those plants and that you'll use different hormones in the media to achieve. Then stage three, or so let's stop there, zero through two, that's our lab phase. So as customers or growers, we're really not going to work a lot in these first three stages. But once we get to stage three, this is the rooting phase. And so we've put auxins in the hormone or in the media to drive root growth. And this is often what you'll receive from a lab is a rooted tissue culture plantlet. And sometimes you actually have unrooted in here as well. But this is the form that you'll hear people talking about and what you'll likely receive in your greenhouse. Now, stage four is that acclimation uh, process. So this is the most important part for a grower and what we're going to spend the most of our time on. So this is taking that plant out of that container into the greenhouse environment where we need to control humidity, light, and temperature in order to get our final product that we're going to ship off to our customers. So uh, Deanna, talk to us about the forms that people could see when it's coming into the greenhouse. 
So um, you can receive in agar, which would be the top container. Uh, it can be in a container with the agar on it. And um, then we can receive in a tray um, with a little plantlet, or um, we can receive um, in a bag, which would be ex agar, or we can get a clump, which would be the picture down to the right, or it can have a single stem. So those are the different forms that you can receive the plant material in. And a lot of those can have different success rates, right? Uh, yes. Not always equal. Uh, for instance, the clumps we have found tend to be um, slower and um, you always end up with a more dominant shoot in it. And the um, good example in the picture there of the of that particular item, it has a long um, water root that can ha you can have a different effect there. That is actually not a root that actually takes up nutrients. Yeah, so depending on the labs you're working with um, or even the crop you're working with, you might receive something in auger or ex auger, or maybe you'll get something in an auger plug like uh, ferns typically come in. 